This is my attempt to write a universal American song. I get behind the wheel of my automobile and I drive Around town, top down, good to be alive You in the front seat, feet up on the dashboard A case of beer and a gear shift on the floor We go shabop, 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 yeah, yeah, hey, hey so good to be with you here in Kansas City, this magnificent bird with the big boulevards and the fountains, the Paris of the plains, except the streets are wider and the people speak our very own language. This is the city that gave us Robert Altman, the great movie director, and gave us, gave us Calvin Trillin, and gave us Walt Disney, although all three of them went away. They left Kansas City. <laughs> I don't know why. Don't ask me. Walt Disney had a beautiful childhood in Kansas City, and he loved to ride around on a little train in a park called Electric Park, and he took some of the ideas from that park, and he and he made his own park somewhere out west. I've heard of it. And, uh, but I'm sure he's been forgiven, forgiven here some, some time ago. The tall pine trees and the morning glory vines. Pink stuck with driving under the neon signs. Car hop walks. Let me just hear you say, Louie. Excellent, excellent. That's a very good start. It's a very good start. Here where, uh, where bourbon comes from, 95% of the bourbon in, in America from right around here, not too far. In the, in the bluegrass country where the calcium in the soil somehow does something for, does something for bourbon, does something for the water that they put into, into bourbon. 95% and uh, the other 5% is not really bourbon, it's sub-bourbon, and uh, it comes from <laughs> God knows where, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's mislabeled. I love you from your hair due to your bare feet, a green bikini and your skin so clean and sweet, sweet summertime, you and I, 22 years old. Oh, it's good to be here. Thank you, Cincinnati. Pleasure to... Pleasure to be here in this great city where Mr. William Proctor and Mr. James Gamble went to business uh, in the days of the Civil War. They, uh, they found um, a, a free byproduct of the, of the slaughterhouses, uh, uh, pig fat, and they made soap from it. And uh, they sold soap to the, to the Union Army during, during the Civil War. A lot of other people made soap too. I mean, the process of making it was no big mystery. People have been making it for hundreds of years. But in 1880, they came up with ivory soap. No mention of pig fat in the advertising for ivory soap. Ivory soap was advertised as 99 and 44 one hundredths percent pure, and it would float soap that would float. Floating soap <laughs> is about as useful as uh, flying pigs or, uh, <laughs> or a cat who can sing. I mean, you hold the soap in your hand, you wash yourself with it, what do you need it to float for? But somehow it captured the imagination of the American people and that put Procter & Gamble a mile ahead of all of their, all of their competitors. Advertising, advertising, creating magical illusions. You look very clean to me, I must say. You smell, you smell good. This whole audience smells better than, better than average. And, uh, and, uh, and you look like you all brushed your teeth and you're all 
fine. I mean, if you should be eating chili with spaghetti with cheese and onions, you should brush more than once a day. God knows, but anyway. Promise me, baby, we will always be true. Always be right around town with beautiful you. We'll go shabbat, shabbat, shabbat. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey. Shabbat, shabbat, shabbat. 